Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Why central bank must bring down inflation by Sanusi. President leads PEDS for Saudi with investment options. 19 years after final severance benefits for airways workers. Banks assets base rose to 125 trillion in third quarter. NLC emo government clash over attack on Nigeria's village. Naira firm up will continue up contradicts. Dangote repatriated $684 million from African operations and Jay's Bank grew profits by 74% in Q3. Let me start with the major headlines. So the 14th Army of Kano spoke when he led members of, his, of the impact investing community to a cut visit um, to CBN to see the CBN governor, Olayemi Cardoso. Um, he said that the inflation rate has maintained a long streak of consecutive increases over the month and that the government must um, immediately do something to ensure that the inflation rate comes down. According to him, he added that many people do not know the impact of central bank's works until central bank fails. He acknowledged the importance of long-term planning by the CBN to achieve its own goals and also emphasized the need for fiscal authorities to focus on agriculture and education, especially for the girl child. He expressed delight at the visit of Cardoso um, he also pledged continued support by the impact by the impact investing community to the CBN. Cardoso also, in response to him, reiterated the fact that the bank will focus mainly on core mandate of price stability. He restated his team's determination to change the narrative about the Apex Bank and make it more efficient going forward. Um, he said at the end of the channel, they want people to look back and see their policies have actually impacted the lives of the Nigerian people. Okay, let me just follow up on another CBN story. So, Dr. Amin Ogwadabe, who is the president of the Association of Bureau de Change Operators of Nigeria, said that, of course, that Naira will continue to rally because the CBN has a double-edged strategy against this, which is liquidity of the dollar and mopping up of um, cash through interest rates in, um, in Naira to keep the Naira stable. He said this is, of course, very um, commendable. The, the local currency had crossed 1350 to a dollar in the parallel market, and recently it dropped again to 950 to the to a dollar. And he says that it will continue to be like that because of this development that you know the CBN is doing. He commended them and also asked that the CBN. Um, continue to give, make clarification and implement some of the association's recommendations going forward. Okay. Yes, I have. Um, so our president who is described as being taking his aggressive push for more investments to Saudi Arabia. He'll be attending the bilateral summit there. And um, one of the things that will be on the table will be how Nigeria can take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Um, the Saudi African summit will explore economic ties between Africa and Saudi Arabia, including counterterrorism, agriculture, and um, and the environment. Then the Arab African summit will focus on expanding infrastructure between both regions, especially a new high-speed train network between the Arab League of Nations and then the African Union countries. Um, the spokesperson for the president, um, Adjuri Galali, saying to us that you know they're so many expectations on the outcomes from this summit, um, what it would mean for us. He's saying that, the, uh, you know, apart from just increased trade among between these two countries, um, you know, especially as they're leading econom economies in the Arab world, that's Saudi Arabia, and then we in Africa, you know, we're hoping that this will bring about increased and more profitable economies, right. jobs across the two regions. And then um, he's saying that, as we all know, our, our president is very aggressive, as always, in his promotion and pursuit of new foreign direct um, investment. And he'll be meeting with investors across sectors and will be pushing very proactively for new inflows for foreign exchange into Nigerian economy through investment in really growth-enabling and labor-intensive sectors of the economy. Right. So the NLC and... Um the Imo state governments have had a bit of clash. Specifically, the um, NLC has alleged that the Imo state governor um, has instigated attacks against um, the NLC president, Joe Ajero's village, the hometown. The Joe Ajero had last Wednesday led 
workers in Uwere to protest the fact that what they what they are uh, alleging as the failure of the government to pay salaries and the fact that the government has not delivered any dividends to the people and they attacked on violence. Um, the um, Joe Ajere himself was attacked and he said some thugs were brought in to stop the protest. In that attack, the police had to take him away because he sustained some injuries that led uh, and in, in, they put in the guise of protective custody. Then, on the fourth Saturday, a few days after that event, they said that some people came, some thugs came to his village and came to ransack his village in the guise of trying to get him, that it was just normal thug, thug reactivity, but they are alleging, the NLC is alleging, and the TUC are, are threatening to um, go on strike unless the IGP redeploys the police officers that are the commissioner of police in Imo states. Um, they made other demands because they felt the police was compromised in how it handled the protest that they felt was peaceful. They also alleged that the attack that took place in Ajero's village, which is in Azala, Owela, in Omekuku Owere um, of Imo State, the hometown of the NLC president, was instigated by the governor. But the governor has debunked this claim, saying he was not in any way involved in what is happening between them. But we're hoping that the um, police actually steps in to bring peace to the states. And those that are complaining of salary being paid, um, they should get their salaries paid. OK, moving on to the punch. <clears throat> Off-season government polls, 220 police patrol vehicles deployed in Imo, Kogi, and Bayosa. Commanders others killed as military bombards terrorists. Details of 70 recovered corps with police in Abia. Lautech students sue Makinde for relocating agri faculty. Trafficker excretes 86 heroin wraps. NDLEA seizes 14.54 million opioids. Israel gives condition for ceasefire. Deaths hit 11,000. Cooking gas scarcity hits Lagos, Castina, and others. Um, Niger, Benue, Kano, marketers hike fuel, blame transport costs, and collecting pension on lawful Fala hotels, Akwabio, and others. Um, can I, okay, NDLEA, um, they're reporting that um, no fewer than 14,481,519 pills of tramadol and bottles of codeine syrup worth over 13 billion in street value have been recovered by you know, about three different operations um, that they did recently, called three major busts. Um, it happened in um, Amor, Dauphin, Idumota, and also the Sarko Shed of the Mutala Mohammed International Airport. So the first one um, was a raid on a house, 810 Honorable Wahu Hal Avenue in Divine Estate, Agor Palace area of Amor, Dauphin, where 490,000 pills of tramadol, 81,519 bottles of codeine syrup, measuring 4,510,000 mils were recovered. Then NDLE also, the second bust, um, they swapped in on a secret warehouse operated by a billionaire Idumota trader, Mwaha Anayo. This um, place is located in Aguda of Surulere, where over 12.7 million pills of tramadol were recovered. Then at the Sarko's um, shed at the Motala Mohammed Airport. So this six is a syndicate of six employees of um, Skyway Aviation Handling Company Warehouse. So they were using the official, um, you know, uh, official office hmm. to be running this whole syndicate. Uh, they said that this particular operation took them many weeks, but after then they, were, they, they <laughs> arrested them. 1.2. Uh, over 1.2 uh, million pills of tramadol was seized from them after the operation. Their picture is on the page of the paper and their names also written out. And then finally, this man was arrested, a 50-year-old man arrested. Um, he was about to, he had left Lagos and was heading to France, um, uh, to Amsterdam, sorry. And then he was scanned, found that he had ingested heroin and then... After he had been kept for a while, he was able to excrete them. And they said he excreted 86 pellets of heroin, weighing 1.330 kilograms. All right, let's go on a quick break now. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. 